Washington football. Woo! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host, Kyle, and I am joined by my two co-hosts, Mr. Michael Reed and the new Todd father, Mr. Todd Wright. Mm -hmm. And just wanted to say the Burgundy Zone is part of the Frederick Podcast Network. You can find out more at www.listenfrederick.com. But we are joined for the first time ever, the infamous Mr. Jordan Assery of Washington football team today that everyone knows. How are you doing, sir? Thank you for joining us. I'm good. Thanks for having me, Kyle. Of course, sir. And I, the first thing we got to get into, Jordan, because I don't think we could talk about anything else at this point, but it's the quarterback position for the Washington football team. Everyone is up in riot over it. So I wanted to get your opinion. Would you rather the Washington football team go hard after one of these vet quarterbacks through trade, maybe free agency, or would you rather them go down the route of the rookie quarterback like the Bengals did? So I definitely think they should start by going after one of the bigger names, like the Russell Wilsons, the Deshaun Watsons, the Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, their success rate might not be what we want it to be. I don't know if that's even like a realistic thing that they could pull off. If they can't, then I definitely think they should go the route of a rookie quarterback because they've been trying the route of like these retreat bridge, like tier C quarterbacks for a long time now, and it just it doesn't work. That's a good point. Yeah. Right. So so you mentioned the rookie quarterbacks. I mean, we've all started to dive pretty deep into this rookie class. Of course, as we know, this rookie quarterback class, it, it's not what it has been for the last few years. But there are some very interesting prospects out there with some high upside. Who are some guys that you're really looking at for Washington to maybe take a look at in the early rounds? So definitely uh, QB I like is Kenny Pickett. I feel like he's yeah. probably the most pro ready out of all the guys there. Um, another option I like, not necessarily in round one, but maybe it's like a round two or three guy that you can grab and develop is Malik Willis just because of his athletic tools. Yeah. But other than that, I'm not really high on much of the other guys. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm right there with you. Kenny Pickett, a lot of it's going to depend on the combine. I mean, I know he hasn't had many issues with fumbling and he's very experienced. He's my quarterback one as well. Uh, Malik Willis, so he's very, somebody who I think is really going to shoot. I mean, you can't teach his potential, but like his athletic ability is just insane. So it's going to be very interesting to see. Same with Desmond Ritter, somebody else who's very experienced and athletic that, that I really like. The senior bowl is going to be very, very telling. Yes. So Do those the rosters in, ter yeah, in terms yeah. of quarterbacks, it's going to be fun. So quarterback is obviously like the biggest issue we got going on, but what would be the next position that you think is going to get filled either through the draft or free agency? So I'm hope I'm hoping strongly that they find a middle linebacker because they were kind of hoping Jamin Davis could be that guy, but it's becoming evident now that him and Cole Holcomb will be like that left and right, but they still need that center piece to really tie everything together. Yeah, I totally agree with you in that aspect because like that's what we thought Jamin Davis, that's what we were getting out of him, <laughs> you know. But Jordan, you're local. I did I saw you, I believe I saw you week one, and I think I saw you at training camp, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe you didn't wear it at training camp, but you're a local guy around here, around this area with us. The stadium news got brought up last week. We had Michael Phillips on, he's talked about it. So besides like DC, is there anywhere that you would like for this new stadium to be at? Well, DC is definitely my number one option, but I would say like uh, somewhere in Virginia, like maybe Norfolk, Virginia, maybe closer to close to like really, Richmond, but I'm not I'm not too picky on where it is. Wow. That, that's right. surprising. Norfolk. Woo. Yeah. Also, no, obviously, oh, go ahead. I don't mean to. Sorry. I don't mean to break any news on here, but I, I'm actually from New Jersey and I've lived in New Jersey my whole life. Oh, man, I'm sorry. Uh, no, hey, man, I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> so, so, I mean, you must. I hope yeah. you don't run into Keith at all. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, I got yeah, no, I don't. Too. Thankfully, I don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, obviously, you know we weren't going to let you get out of here without talking about the big news. Obviously, the rebrand, the name change. What name change? How, what, what do you think is <laughs> – what do you think – if alleged name change, who knows? Maybe, maybe they're not going to – maybe they're going to stay watching the football team. Do you mm -hmm. think that – all signs are pointing towards commanders. Do you think that it is commanders? Do you think that they could be pulling something, a fast one, and maybe they're going somewhere completely different? And how do you think that they've done so far with this rebrand process? So my gut is telling me that it's going to be commanders, but my brain also wants me to think, you know, this could be a big misdirection. Cause I don't know if you guys saw, but unlike the NBC broadcast, 
you saw Jason Wright with like the paper on his yeah, leg and it said right. command, it showed the logo and the name. I don't know if they really like that could have been intentional. I feel like that that's what I've been thinking. Intentional. Right. So I feel like that could have been like a misdirection ploy and it could be some kind of name out of like right field that we don't know about, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. Nonetheless, I really don't know. <laughs> right. Top. I'm sorry. Uh, with the whole rebrand and everything going on, you know, something that I'm personally connected to is, is the band and something that I've always loved. Mm. Like, do we have any insight, whether that's coming back? Is that like, are they going to come up with a new, new uh, song, like a fight song or anything like that? Have you heard anything about that? I haven't, but I would, I would hope they have some kind of marching band. Cause that's been like a tradition for a long time, like 80 plus years. Yeah. Right. You're absolutely right about that. I know that you were one of the wolves, such red wolves guys, Jordan, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we're all different. We all can't be perfect. But I would, <laughs> what are your feelings about them kind of taking away that name? And is there anything that you're kind of that you have a personal kind of favorite at this point? Yeah. So I mean, when they said it wasn't going to be red wolves or wolves, I didn't really take it personally because honestly, at the end of the day, all I care about is the uniforms more. And My just man. as long as the product, yeah, as long as the product on the field is good enough, whatever the name is, it won't really matter. As long as it's not something like really, really bad. But right now, I think my favorite's Commanders. I mean, can it be worse than Wizards? Like, when no, it gets down to it? Absolutely not. Like, <laughs> that's true. That's right, very true, yeah. I hope not. I don't think it can. Right, yeah. And, and that's grown on us as well. I blame uh, so, Harry I mean, Potter. Hey, it, yeah. So, <laughs> so obviously, let, let's get back to the football field here. So, another big position of need is wide receiver. Obviously, you look at this free agency class. This free agency class should be absolutely stacked at, at wide receiver. I know – Coming into last season, we thought that we were kind of set. You know, you had Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, De'Ami Brown. And uh, some of these guys didn't really pan out. De'Ami Brown didn't show as much as people would have liked. Curtis Samuel, of course, was injured all year. Do you expect them to go after another wide receiver, possibly early in the draft or uh, one of these big-name free agents? I feel like I feel like they almost have to because I know they have high hopes for Curtis Samuel, and obviously this year was a disappointment. But he still has all the talent in the world. But also at the same time, you cannot bank on him coming back and being that guy, you know, week right. in and week out. They almost have to like prepare for the situation that this year could be a repeat of last year and he doesn't see the field a lot because of injuries. But um and with Diami Brown, obviously he had he was disappointing. But he's still a third round rookie. Obviously, not every third round receiver is gonna be Terry McLaurin, just come out right. and like shine off the bat. So I feel like we could probably go for another receiver and just give him more time to like settle in and develop as a player. And then who, whatever QB we have, obviously he's going to need multiple guys that he can throw the ball to. And what did you think? How did you, what were your kind of feelings when, cause I know how everyone else kind of felt about it on the Twitter sphere, but when Curtis Samuel came out in his end of the year press conference and said that he feels a hundred percent healthy now than he has all season long. <laughs> that was just like rubbing salt in the wound for me. I don't even know why he would say it really. <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you, dude. Now the next question I have for you, because, you know, this fan base is so crazy in the aspect of the middle ground because, you know, you have the older fan base that's prideful, they, the glory days that they live through where guys like us, we haven't really seen any of that. All we have seen is being disappointed on Sundays, Jordan. So what is it like to be a young fan of this team going through all of this time? Yeah, I mean, it, it really stinks because I got I got frames in my room of Doug Williams, Daryl Green, R. Monk. I've, I've never seen any of these dudes play in real time. So I want I want one of those guys that I can cling to myself. You know, that's all we want. That's all right. we want. Dude. That's all we want. Yeah. So tell us a little bit, Jordan. How did how did your fanhood start? I know obviously you're a little bit younger than us. So I'm always interested to hear. Because like when I was growing up, obviously, my parents were my entire family's been diehard. R word fan, Redskins fans. Uh, so they grew up. I mean, I mean, they were winning, and then I was kind of brought into it, and I never saw the winning. But like, how does somebody like you get involved in the Washington football team? So the way I became a fan is like it's really boring. Like my favorite color is red, and right. the first time I was watching football, it was Redskins Giants, and I was like, ooh, okay, right. man, I like those uniforms. I'll I'll be a fan of this team. And it just <laughs> yeah. kind of happened from there, and then hey. but then I really I fell in love with uh, Santana Moss. Yeah, he, right. He's, he's an awesome dude, too. He, we had him on. Yeah, he's like a catalyst for me. You poor right. son of a yeah. gun, dude. He's, you picked the yeah. worst. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, I feel That's... bad. For, yeah, you could have watched any other team. You could have watched the 49ers or right. something. You got stuck with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Man. That's hysterical. So, 
what what do you think it's going to take to grow a younger fan base like you, you just kind of happen to walk into it with the color but like these younger kids the the to regrow our entire fan base there's not a lot of us left to be completely frank yeah. what do you think it takes to start that and really make it what it once was the tiktok generation yes i i really think that this this uh rebrand and new name might actually help because it could be something that the younger fans can like cling on to and feel like we have a part of right yeah or uh we could pull the matthew mcconaughey route and just have a whole bunch of players with the last name hamburger that's how he became a washington fan he was watching chris hamburger and he said my favorite food's a hamburger when he was a kid so that hamburger sounded like it so he became a fan of washington now jordan we don't we don't know how the off season's gonna go we don't know what they're gonna do in free agency or the draft but let's just say from this team now from where they finished off all the players that are on the roster who do you think will or expect to take the biggest leap in 2022? Okay. Take the biggest leap in 2022. I would probably – that's tough. I'd say maybe maybe John Bates, honestly. Really? Sam Cosme. See, John Bates is a smart one because we don't know how long Logan Thomas is out for, right? He like he had he tore his ACL that was late in the year, towards the end of the year. You would then that rehab is usually a year. So the John Bates pick, that's phenomenal. Yeah, he's he's got he's got the talent. He might have been actually not might have. He probably was the best rookie last year from the entire class, like our draft our draft class, I would say. <laughs> Most productive. Yeah. Um yeah. and I mean Especially in terms be. of the PFF rating. He was one of the best blockers. He was the best blocking tight end in the NFL. I mean, you could say year. Cameron Cheeseman, yeah. but hey, I'm not putting <laughs> yeah, hairs here. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Nobody these. Reed? Maybe Jamin Davis. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm hot and cold on him right now. Right. Everybody so, <laughs> out of all the guys that, that watch it, of course, we have like Brandon Sheriff, J.D. McKissick, uh, DeAndre Carter. We have all these players that are expected to hit the market, that could hit the market. Who is the most important player that you think Washington needs to bring back? <sighs> this is going to sound bad because it's a running back, but I, I really think J.D. McKissick should be. Hey, like, I'm right there with you. I'm priority. everybody. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. You saw the offense once he got hurt. It really just, like, fell off a cliff. Right. He's really become one of the best third down backs in the NFL, especially just as, as a pass catcher out of the backfield. That guy's so valuable to whoever our quarterback is going to be. Um, and part of me wants Scherf back, but also at the mm. same time, I mean, yeah, I don't, it's going to be so expensive. Hard with giving a guard, you know, 20 million plus a year, especially because Wes Schwetzer could probably start there and maybe not play to the level of Brandon Scherf, but he's a competent starter. Yeah, oh yeah. We saw last year. I mean, the offensive line didn't really seem to miss a beat when early on when, when Sheriff was out of the lineup and when with Wes Schweitzer filling in. But then of course obviously it fell apart down the line. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's not a bad idea. So this team has had one all pro player in the last as far as I can remember, probably mm -hmm. since I've been born. Um is there anyone that you see on this roster that could ever actually make that leap besides Sheriff currently? Um, someone moving forward that might be a part of this team, or Tressway. are we just shoot at the dark? It's <laughs> Tressway. Uh, but... Well, yeah. With the right quarterback, I would say Terry McLaurin could probably be that guy. All pro. Okay. I I think yeah. so. I think he has. I think he has Definitely. the traits of like a elite receiver. He just needs a QB that can really get the ball downfield to him consistently. Th thank you, dude. Yeah. I was I was saying that in the summer, people wouldn't even put him in the top ten wide receivers in the league. Like my, yeah. my guy has had like ten different quarterbacks throwing him the football since he's come here, man. Let's Did you see the pie chart? There was a part pie chart that was going around Twitter a couple weeks ago <laughs> of all the passes to Terry, yeah. and somehow Dwayne Haskins had like a third of all of his yeah, passes. Yeah, right. That was bad. That was. <laughs> Awful. That, that, that put it in real perspective. Yeah, and that was yeah. very, very surprising. Now, Jordan, to wrap this up, my next question for you. What do you expect that the Washington football team is going to have prepared for fans next Friday at the Park and Party uh, to celebrate the new name change, the rebrand at FedEx Field? Oh, man. it's. I'm hoping that they give away They give away some free stuff. You know, Are you coming? New... I've wanted to, but I can't. I'm I'm upset that I can't, but Man. hopefully there's a lot of pictures, a lot of videos. It's going to be an interesting couple of days. Right. Dude, you're not kidding about that. And then last thing, what's your current favorite player at the moment? Yeah, Jonathan Allen, definitely. It's second to none, definitely Jonathan Allen, just because 
the way he is uh, on the field and even off the field, you know, like the charities he does. Great all-around player. Do you think that his fight with Deron Payne kind of ruined the community man of the year, the man of the year kind of nomination that he got? I don't know if it ruined it per se, but obviously it's not the greatest look to have, you know, two players fighting on the sideline, definitely. But it could be one of the, it could really be one of those things where it just gets chalked up to, you know, it's two brothers fighting, you know, it happens. Yeah, it does happen. I mean, we saw Jalen Ramsey do it uh, at the end of the season I went to his teammate on the field. Actually, it happened yep. right there. Uh, Jordan, yeah. I can't thank you enough for coming on here, man. You're the famous dude. Um, I can't believe how many followers that you have. It's absolutely incredible, my brother. But before we get out of here, just in case there is anybody watching that doesn't know where they can find you for all the up-to-date news and everything, if you could plug your social media handles. Sure. So on Instagram, you can get me at football team today. And then on Twitter, you can get me at commanders today. My man. There it is. See, there it is. <laughs> See, Made the jump. Everyone keeps talking about JP Finley's uh, comment about commanders on the Washington uh, football talk pod, but I think Jordan's saying that. I think that's uh, solidifying it right there. Jordan, I can't thank you enough for joining us, brother. It's been a pleasure. Um, hopefully we can get you on again, probably maybe around the draft time to be able to get some hype going about it, if that's cool with you. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Really appreciate it. Of course, Jordan. You have a good night, yeah. dude. Enjoy your weekend. All right, be safe. Going, man. Thank you. You guys too. All right, man. See ya. All right, everybody. We just spoke with the infamous Mr. Jordan Nassery. Yeah. One of the one of the best Instagrams on that there is. I've been following him forever on on Instagram at Washington Today and uh it used to be Redskins Today. But also he he runs the JPA football, I think it is. Yeah, yep. that's another that's great Instagram to follow for yeah, NFL fans. Yeah, it is. I mean, obviously he's got a crap load of followers for good reason. Uh I remember mm -hmm. he, he Jordan was like the huge source of all the Haskins workout videos. Uh, when those were getting posted and people were eating them up. I remember those days, man. Those were crazy. <laughs> but uh, let's move on to our fan questions before we are joined by our next guest, which should be coming up here momentarily. But this is from the Colonel, and I'm going to go to you, Reed. If we pick up our quarterback in free agency, what will we be targeting at number 11 or wherever our first pick lands after quarterback negotiations? Uh, so, obviously, yeah, it's – there's a few different directions that Washington that, that they could really go. I mean, you look at wide receiver, obviously, that they, they could do somebody else. Linebacker, obviously, if there's like a Nicobe Dean. Hey, if Kyle Hamilton sometimes somehow falls at free safety, I think that's somebody you got to look at. So it's really like a best player available between a few positions and, and a couple of elite prospects that really could be there. Yeah, you see dude, players fall all the time. Yeah, I watched a little bit more of Kyle Hamilton yesterday. I was able to find the film on against the Hokies, against my Hokies, and what he did. To, uh, was absolutely disgusting. Then turning on the Florida State tape where he's just running across the field for some of these picks where it's, if any other guy, that is a touchdown because it's completely blown coverage. There's no one around him. But this man, Kyle Hamilton, runs half the field to pick the ball off. It was absolutely incredible. So I do think that the free safety Kyle Hamilton is the dream at that point at number 11. I know everyone wants the quarterback, but there's a lot of talent up there. And I do think that wide receiver is one of those spots in that top end of the first round where you could really get some talent or trading back I think is probably the best thing because I know like guys like Jordan Davis a defensive tackle or is there as well it's just are you willing to mortgage that pick on another defensive tackle is my say, if we took another defensive yeah. lineman this fan base would lose their mind right you I would that. too personally you, you can't you can't do that yeah I mean, but it's best player available, right? And that's what a lot of people would argue at that point. And I completely understand it because the other aspect Wait. is offensive line. And they spent on Sam Cosme. They re-signed Charles Leno. So what right. to do at that point? And I know that people have brought up like Evan Neal possibly playing guard. But what do you think, Todd? I think we've done it too many times in a row. Best player available is great, but you also have to fill holes in your roster. And right now, that is not what we need. Right. You know, you got linebacker. You need a receiver. You need a quarterback. Honestly, I don't think we're going to have a first round pick because I think we're going to make some trade. I think something's going to happen, but, I, you know. Todd, is this breaking news? Are you hearing this from inside the park right now? Did oh, we trade oh, our first round no. pick? <laughs> Wouldn't that be tight, though, Todd? <laughs> the, ne the next question from the Just break something. The, yeah. next, the next question from the Colonel, Todd. I'm going to go to you first. Several mock drafts now show Kenny Pickett going to Denver at number nine and Matt Corral being the second quarterback off the board for Washington at number 11. What are your comments on that? Sure. Bring it on. Bring someone fresh and fun. I, I mean, 
it's going to suck to not have Pickett. That's who I want. I think that's who most people are really excited about getting. But we just need something. It, here's the thing. From my perspective, with a rebrand, with a new name, with everything that you have, you need to make a splash at quarterback because that's who the face of your franchise is always. So whether you trade and get somebody like a Russell Wilson, whether you are going to the draft, you have to get someone that is going to be good and marketable because you need this this person to sell you a crap ton of jerseys and to be the face of your franchise with a new name going into a new era completely. You want someone that's going to be there that, that can do that for you. I agree with you. I agree with you, Todd. I think you nailed it because I think the one aspect everyone's forgetting about this quarterback thing is the salespeople, is the is the higher-ups, the brass, wanting to sell seats, and they know that this area loves the quarterback position, and they show up when that's there. But the thing is for me, like, you know, des- the old saying, desperation is a terrible cologne, and that's where I'm kind of weird about taking just any quarterback at 11 just because you need one. We, that's not the best recipe for success because if that turns out not to be the guy, like I'm sorry to say, but like Haskins in two to three years, we're doing the same exact thing. We're going for a quarterback. If we want to solve that issue, I want to solve it now, at least with a top tier veteran quarterback that can really elevate this football team or a quarterback that can step in right away. And I'm not thrilled about Matt Corral. I'm not in college. It should be a lot easier to throw the football and he makes it very difficult. He runs out of the pocket too much, and he gets destroyed. His body gets eaten up. And in the NFL, that's not going to fly. You are going to get knocked the hell out. And so when you're talking about, like you said, Todd, you need a quarterback for like 10 years, I'm worried about that with Matt Corral. But if he fits their system, if they're, if they're confident with what he can do, I can't I can't argue with them. They know football better than I do. They, they've forgotten more football stuff than I have remembered <laughs> or have learned. So I would – I trust them. What about you, Reed? Right. I mean, I mean, yeah, obviously, like you guys touch out, you need to address quarterback. Like, there's no question about that, no matter how they do it. They, they need to make a big splash, whether that's first-round pick, free agent trade. But um, if, if we're looking at it, I mean, if they were to bring in somebody like Jameis Winston, say, let's just say they bring Jameis in if he's not hurt. I mean, he's somebody he's played well. He's got a lot of potential out there. He's somebody who I think would be a vet that could hold the seat over for, for a quarterback. And took somebody like Matt Corral and developed him, I would be completely okay with that. Matt Corral is very interesting to me because he reminds you, of, he reminds me a lot of Taylor Heineke with a stronger arm. He has a very strong arm. He's very fiery. He's emotional. His teammates love him. He's mobile. But you're right, Kyle. The one thing that is very frustrating with Matt Corral is he is terrible when it comes to throwing the ball when the pocket collapses. When he's under pressure he you wouldn't expect his game to be like this because he's very good on the move and he does pick up some rushing yards even though I don't think he'd be able to do that in the NFL um and it's kind of frustrating but because the guy's got all the tools but hey who knows if he could sit and learn and they feel comfortable with him like you said they know more than I do so I would be completely whoever they take I'm going to trust them for the first couple years yes and the colonel's last question is a fantastic one because this is the one position that we always think is solidified, is straight, and then some something happens where we're like, what? Why? But his question is, are they going to go after a running back in the offseason this year, Reed? You know, they have J.D. McKissick, who's going to be a free agent, who they're, we've heard from sources that everyone has, that they're going to want to re-sign and bring back here. They have Antonio Gibson. He has had his fumble issues, but for the first time in his career, back-to-back uh, double-digit touchdowns uh, for his seasons, which is great. But then you have Jarrett Patterson, who flashed and did really well. Jonathan Williams was actually showing to be a really good piece for this offense later on in the in the season. So, Reed, do you think they're going to go after running back and surprise us yet again? Um, I think that it's definitely a possibility. I, I think it's more likely, though, in the draft. I think that they'll re-sign J.D. McKissick. And, and then, like you said, Antonio Gibson had his fumbling problems. Uh, he still rushed for over 1,000 yards. I know it was during a 17-game season. And you're right. He, he's still learning the position. So I think he's still high upside. But I think if you can bring in somebody young uh, just in the middle of the draft or something that can really – maybe provide if Antonio Gibson goes down or, or let's say his fumbling issues start again, or maybe he can offer as, as a kick returner or, or even he can double as JD McKissick's replacement. If McKissick goes down or whatever have you, I, I think you can never have enough good football players. I would not be surprised at all if they go running back. 
Yeah, and look, if they do go through the draft, um, I would love James Cook from Georgia, Dalvin Cook's younger brother. I thought that he looked very, very good. And like I've said uh, last year, when we talked about before the draft, if they're going to get a running back, I want it to be a backup that is capable of taking the number one carries in case of injuries, because we have seen with this team, injuries do happen, and they happen in bunches. So I want to be able to have a young guy to be able to do that. No disrespect to Jarrett Patterson. I love the kid, local kid. But if I'm we're going to go through the draft, I want it to be somebody who is capable of being the right. number one running back. But that being said, Colonel, I don't think they're going to go through free agency in any aspect. I think J.D. McKissick is the key in bringing him back. He was the best pass blocking back uh, for the team last year. He was pivotal. Obviously, Taylor Heineke's uh, play decreased when J.D. McKissick went out. His kind of like little helper, his little outlet went away and things went awry for Taylor Heineke. So I think J.D. McKissick is the key to bringing him back and then maybe re-signing Jonathan Williams. I thought he did really well in that aspect, but I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't care if they drafted one or went after one. I would be surprised, but if they didn't, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. What about you, Todd? Yeah, I I think with J.D. getting re-signed, like, let, we're just assuming that happens because I think that that's kind of just a given at this point. I I think we're set. Like, yes, can you draft someone in the middle of the draft? Absolutely. Is it got to be a big name? No. I, there's other bigger fish to fry. I think, sure, you can you can shore up that depth chart a little bit, bring someone in that might have a little bit of stability, someone who, in case Gibson does start with the fumbles again, you can kind of say, hey, we're take a break. We're going to come back to you. Let's get this kid some reps. You know, like you said, Patterson, love him, did great at Buffalo just hasn't really shown quite that he's going to be an every down back. Um, but that's fair. JD McKissick in this, in this role that he's got here has been uh, just phenomenal. And the offense runs really well with him in there. So bringing in someone, sure, you know, it's not going to hurt you in any way, but I don't necessarily see it being a big glaring hole that needs to be addressed immediately. Right. right. Real test. Last, last time we had a two headed monster at running back was those Clinton Portis and Liddell Betts days. Yes. You felt comfortable with Liddell Betts coming in because you knew Liddell Betts could take the care. You knew that if something happened to Clinton Portis, Liddell Betts was a fantastic running back. So I love Liddell yeah. Betts and it, it sucks about Clinton Portis um, getting uh, with the court and everything that, that really sucks. But the next yeah. question, next question real fast before we get into our next guest Jeff Miles yes, in, our, in our Discord chat server, he says, so basically uh, JP confirms its commanders on the Washington football team talk podcast today. Is it set in stone, Reed? Um, see, I want to almost say yes. I mean, it just seems like it's so obvious at, at this point. But at the same time, like, I don't want to doubt Jason Wright and them that much. Like, I feel like it's almost been too easy for us fans, like, especially the internet sleuths. Like, you got to know that those guys are going to catch on to stuff. So it's almost like they left some of this stuff out on purpose. And then, of course, you have all these Twitter users who, I mean, take it with a grain of salt, but they're like, no, 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 I talked to somebody and this person's, and I know they're, they're all lying, but I like to believe that maybe one of them's actually telling the truth. Uh, but I've, I've, commanders, I like, I, it's grown on me. Like we, we've talked about, as long as the jerseys are all right and, and they completely turn this thing around, get a quarterback, start winning, I don't care. I really don't care. But yes, I do think it is going to be commanders ultimately. No, I don't think that sets it in stone, Jeff. Um, I don't think that at all. One thing I will say I thought was hilarious that happened earlier in the week was this guy had taken these Washington Red Hogs sweatshirts that he had ordered <laughs> and took it and brought it so to funny. the Washington so football that was team. So good. Brought it to the Washington yeah. football team store and put it on one of the hangers with the jerseys and took a picture and was like, Oh, this is at the, the, the team store at Montgomery Mall. And but the funny thing is, like it was a big trolling job. I just love this fan base so much. Yeah. But one right. thing I will say is I think Jason Wright and company are very smart. And so they are orchestrating a bunch of these leaks in order to push a bunch of it out. And so none of it is believable. So in case that they are hinting at the possible name with any of these leaks, you wouldn't be able to trust it, let alone believe it, that that is the new name. So I think it is all by design. I think they're doing a very good job at that. But I don't think it's solidified that it's commanders. I think what they're doing is they're going to come completely out of left field with this because they want, like Todd said, splash. Splash. Big splash. And by tricking everybody is the best way to do it. What do you think, Todd? So I know you guys aren't like big wrestling fans, but this I for am. the last few well, I mean for the last few well, not weeks. Big, but yeah, okay. This is right, right. 
this has been the closest that Washington football Twitter has been to wrestling Twitter right. ever. Because all these conspiracy theories, there's like kayfabe. Everyone's like, is this really what's right. going to happen? Is this yeah. like what's going on behind the scenes? Like, it's just been hilarious to me because I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm just watching everyone with all these like wild stories. And I'm like, none of, the, <laughs> none of it's true. You can't believe right. anything. Like every once in a while, there might be a report where you're like, hmm, maybe. But what I think is, honestly, if you start leaking things slowly, like maybe it is commanders. Maybe let's say it is. Everyone's now used to it because you've heard it a lot. And the more you hear something, repetition, the more you hear it, the more you're going to like it. Where if you hear something out of left field, let's, and and it's just a name where you're like, that, what? Like all all of a sudden you have confusion and confusion can either be great or terrible. So if you start leaking it little by little and you're like, oh yeah, maybe it's the commanders. Maybe you just saw this logo and oops, it wasn't supposed to be there. Maybe that's not the real logo, but it's the real name. You know, there's a whole bunch of different theories that you can go out with, but and you're right. I, I love mean, it. Do you know how many people I've seen on Twitter just over the last couple of days be like, no, I didn't like the name at first, but at this point, Commanders has grown on me so much. I'm going to be disappointed. Exactly. I will say, like, I, so I've true. heard, I've heard the logo is fire. I've heard that the logo is good. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, you know, we all saw the video of, of Chase checking out the jerseys and yeah. you know, like, seemed, y'all everyone's crazy. seen the jerseys. The jerseys seem to be fire, but I heard that the logo is pretty good too. Right. That's name and the logo all right todd i don't like that you're keeping all of this to yourself okay sharing it's, is caring brother I'll, i mean i'll send you i'll send you a little something i don't like it's it's not i haven't heard anything that like i don't know what it is i don't can't confirm anything i just heard that you know it's kind of nice yeah you know? send it to daddy and to send your, it to daddy and to your point i got uh, you. todd talking about people getting used to the name Jeff Miles, who was a very vocal person for Wolves and Red Wolves, said, honestly, I think everyone was just pissed they didn't go with Wolves. But when it comes to commanders, considering what's left to choose from is the most acceptable. So even somebody like Jeff Miles, who was so for the Wolves movement, is saying, look, out of all the remaining names, it's the most plausible one. To your point there, I think that's absolutely fantastic. So my the next question that we have that I'm going to go with here – oh. Sorry, you guys keep blowing my phone up. I can't tell what's going on here. Um, oh, I, I just sent you what I saw. That's it. Oh. Yeah. General- production team. Yeah, production team may have seen the logo like three days ago. I think. Oh, wow. Time. Dude, I'm telling you, they are not screwing around with no. these jerseys, yeah. man. They are not screwing yeah. around at all. Now, let's go to our next question that we have here. And this is from our guy, Scott Hartley in the UK. Boy. Oh, actually, no. Boy. I wanted to go to Big Russell's. Because I had put out um, PFF NFL Draft, their Twitter account, I put out their wide receiver rankings for rookie wide receivers. And I had put that George Pickens is my number one wide receiver. And he kind of asked why I kind of thought that. And the reason is for his height, big playability, being able to stretch the field downfield in the 20s, but also the red zone thread. We saw when Logan Thomas went out last year, there was no red zone capability at that point. It was very hard to score points. So that's why I really like George Pickens. He reminds me kind of like A.J. Green. I know it's that lazy comp because he also went to Georgia as the same type of body style, but he has the sticky hands. When you watch his tape for Cincinnati or Alabama, he's making these diving catches, and he's doing a great job to do it. He has the big playability. And sometimes the short yardage stuff does get in the way with him uh, a little bit. But I really like the kid. I think he is a solidified number one. If Jamison Williams didn't tear his ACL, I would have said bona fide right. number one. Um, but I have Traylon if, Burks my number two. Yeah. If um if Pickens didn't get hurt, I think Pickens would have he would have been in the conversation for sure. Um, I also think that you really got to look at Drake London, even though I know that it's hard. Kind of you, you get those wide receivers that get a lot of contested catches, and Drake London had so many contested catches compared to everybody else in college last year that it, it's hard to kind of fall in love with them. But the guy does have size. He's kind of almost like a Vincent Jack Jackson R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Type, type wide receiver, and I like him a lot too. But I. It's there's a lot of good receivers this year, I and, will say. And speaking of falling in love with him, we are now joined by returning <laughs> guest, Mr. Sam Fortier of the Washington Post. How are you doing, Sam? Doing well. How are y'all? Doing fantastic. Doing a lot better now that you're here. Doing good. Yeah. That's right. Dude, I, I don't think I've done one of y'all's episodes with Mike Reed in a while. <laughs> no, I know. I've had to I've had to be MIA because I got a new job and, and my hours suck terribly <laughs> hear that so uh, <laughs> there's nobody else there it's only reed by the way but it is only me I'm sam only i gotta i gotta <laughs> ask you a question here 
because there's lots of fake news coming out about this name change. And you kind of went on to kind of explain um, how some of the fake news was incorrect and meaning that the domain was transferred from name cheaps to mark monitor. And you kind of went into like the IP address. So could you kind of explain like where that is at the moment with the Washington football team name? Because he was talking about the Washington commanders dot com. Yeah, it, it doesn't necessarily it's not necessarily fake news. I just think like. Uh, the domain being transferred from Namecheap to Mark Monitor, like that to me, it's pretty reckless to be like, oh, that is confirmed Washington Commanders because uh, while Mark Monitor does uh, handle 25 of, of the 32 NFL teams uh, domains, still you have other websites that use other things. And if you go to it's basically 31 of 32 teams uh, plus the NFL website link back to four IP addresses. And if you look, if you like look at it, uh, commanders.com, Washington Admirals, kind of the one we heard about earlier this month, those do not link back to the IP addresses, um, which okay. suggests that, you know, it, it's possible commanders and admirals are in play. But I just think being like, you know, this move equals uh, commanders confirmed is just, it, it's a little bit too much. It's a jump, right? You know. Yeah. Especially, isn't Washington one of the teams that doesn't use that? Isn't that what you said? Yeah. So WashingtonFootball.com is is man is like the domain is managed by GoDaddy. The uh, old team website is is managed by Mark Monitor. So you could argue love those like commercials. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love those chicks. commercials. Were like staples growing up. I feel like there was I one know. with like. Uh, with like uh, the supermodel where the dude Danica like in her, yeah, remember that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, trust me, I still watch that. I have them all. On cam- I have them all on VHS. The I watch Sears catalog on- too. Yeah, that was a very weird time. I remember that. Yeah, he's got them all bookmarked on YouTube. Right. I do. The good old days. They just don't make them like that anymore. All right, Reed. You got something? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I got. I started thinking about GoDaddy.com. Got a little bit weirded out. What's your favorite GoDaddy commercial? I'm just kidding. What if that's what, what, if that's what my question was? Uh, so uh, we asked uh, our last guest about this, but I'm, I'm interested to see what everybody has to say. Do you think that Commanders is the overall favorite to be the name, or do you really think that Jason Wright and them are going to pull something out of left field? I, I think that uh, it probably is is still the leader. Like, Like, I get – I appreciate that this has been going on so long that people are like, well, is he tricking us or isn't he? Is, yeah. What's the smoke and mirrors? <laughs> like, I, I don't think that the the people's team that like that commander seal that was in one of those videos. I, I don't think that that was an accident. Uh, right. I don't think that that was like them, you know, messing with y'all. But uh, I think commanders, it's, it's possible. And, and then for me, in like in terms of likelihood, it's probably – what commanders, admirals, red hogs, red tails, and then like everything else probably with like a, you know, 10 to 20%. Mm. Uh, but, but that's certainly, I think the leaderboard uh, and, and that's kind of where I'm at with it. Right. If, if they make the the name admirals, they need to get David Robinson to be just the mascot in general. So <laughs> have, have him at every game at the admiral there. That'd be cool. Jason no. Wright, if you're listening, there you go. That's a million dollar idea. <laughs> They'll increase yeah. recruitment for the Navy like tenfold. Right? Yeah, that's true. I'm joining because of that. You're, you're too old. You don't qualify anymore. Let's not pretend. <laughs> All right, Todd. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, Sam. Um, Sam, do you have any insight into what's going on on the fourth at this uh, parking and and party parking lot party? I guess I forgot the name of it. The parking party. The parking, parking party. party. Yeah, come on, man. Uh, so my you work for is, FedEx. Is, I, first of all, I don't work for no, FedEx. Work for I work for Washington team. football Sorry. team. Sorry. Second of all, I got a, <laughs> I got like a six day old kid, so I'm a little, you know. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. Uh, wait. So, so you work for the team? Yes. Oh. So let us ask you this, Todd. Do you have any insight on what's going on yeah. on the parking lot? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> <That's Nothing. laughs> I I am so insignificant to what happens at the team that I, I, I know you have nothing. to ask Washington. Todd is the Todd is the <laughs> Sam. Todd you know is the on field on coordinator. The the what was that? Sorry. Todd, Todd is the on field coordinator. 
for the yeah. Washington football team for game I'm, day. I'm like a stage manager for like the what goes on the screen during the games. Right. Not um, as flamboyant though as most. Right. Yeah. I, I thought I thought st- like on field coordinators like you were you were the one putting together Wale stage. I, I mean, I was right there. Yeah. No. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Dude, it's. So, it's I mean, like my understanding of park and party, uh, the the time details honestly are uh, not top of mind for me. But it's like, hey, five bucks, come out and and uh, join some select alumni and like you know have some fun with some fans and kind of celebrate the new name. That that's my entire understanding of it. Uh, I actually will will not be there on Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to be down at the Senior Bowl looking at looking at some quarterbacks. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, so more yeah. I'm so my uh, my colleague Nikki Javala will be there though, and, and uh, y'all follow her work, I'm sure. Yes, and, and, okay. uh, so she she's got you plenty taken care of. <laughs> my man. Now I want to bring this back down to earth a little bit, Sam, because I want you to kind of educate us and the fan base because. It got announced that the Oversight and Reform Committee is going to be looking at the Washington football team on the 3rd, the day after the rebrand gets announced. What can happen from that committee? Yeah, so these are not like formal hearings. I, I, there's, you know, no one will be sworn in, but I think this is uh, probably like the maybe the first step toward that uh, if they if they are interested, because. I mean, as, as we know, Carolyn Maloney and, and kind of her staff has and, and her committee has talked about um, looking into this team and, and kind of looking into the NFL's decision to not release the report. So, you know, I think this is like kind of a preliminary step. No one's being sworn in, um, but certainly this is uh, an avenue or, or a way to gather more information and show the rest of Congress, hey, like there is some real you know, sus behavior happening uh, over there at the NFL. We should probably like look into that a little more. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, so you're going down to the senior bowl, do some scouting. Yeah. So I'll be in uh, Mobile, Alabama uh, next week. So, you're so lucky the, the, this quarterback class, who, what quarterbacks are you most excited to see? And who do you really think fits with what Washington wants to do? Cause this roster, this quarterback rosters are loaded in, in terms of quarterback prospects for Washington to look at early in the draft. Yeah. I think, I know that for a while it, it didn't seem like there was a, a top guy uh, of, the, of the top five, um, but I think that uh, it, it seems like Kenny Pickett is becoming yeah. that guy the more that people talk about it. Um, so I think, I think I mean, if he's the top quarterback in the class, and, and everybody in the class has uh, flaws and everybody has uh, strengths, right? And, and, and there's, no, there's no Trevor Lawrence in this draft. Right. Um, but, I mean, if, if Kenny Pickett is, is that dude – uh, I think you got to go him. I'm actually very curious um, because two of those other guys, Malik Willis and Matt Corral, I'm very curious what people make of them. Because if you look at these zone read RPO guys, I know like smaller quarterbacks have succeeded. Right. Mm-hmm. But I mean, think about this year. I mean, how many games did Kyler miss? How many games did Lamar miss Baker yeah. Mayfield? Uh, all those dudes that, that kind of run that style um, miss some games. And so, while the RPO game and, and running your quarterback is, is certainly helpful. Um, I just wonder if, if, you know, teams look at Matt Corral specifically and say, Hey, Hey, can he hold up particularly after his bowl game injury? So I think there's a lot to sort through in this class of quarterbacks and, and a lot of interesting questions moving forward. I love you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Sam, today the news came out that uh, David Mayo got re-signed to the team. I think that was like three hours ago or whatever it was. I have no concept of time anymore. Um, <laughs> what <laughs> what does that mean for this team moving forward? What does that mean for the linebacking core? Like, just kind of give me some some insight around that. Yeah, so I think David Mayo, a core Ron Rivera guy, one of the Carolina to Washington guys. Uh, this is a, a depth signing. I don't think that this you know guarantees him a roster spot coming out of camp, okay. but it is sort of an acknowledgement maybe of, of what he did in the last. Uh, two to three games in, in the year, stepping into that Mike linebacker role when they, you know, just decided, hey, we got to see what Cole Holcomb can do with a with a legit Mike, because obviously, um, you know, Cole, they, they don't think Mike is Cole's future. Uh, they they no longer think that Mike is Jamin's future. So it's, hey, you know, we need a guy that can, you know, who grinds tape, who can call out plays beforehand, who's decisive, who gets downhill, and like. You saw his limitations, uh, you know, on tape, right, uh, against the Eagles. Uh, they ran that Texas route out of the backfield that, that, 
you know, he, he, he looked a little lost, but, but that, you know, that's not his fault. Cause like that dude is, is a downhill, uh, you know, would have been a staple in like the 1990s. Uh, but, but he's still a core special teamer. He's still a guy that I think is, is valuable because if you think about it, like, especially in that DN room, right? Like they let Ryan Kerrigan go after 2020. And I think that room missed that veteran leadership, yep. whether or not Ryan Kerrigan was making, you know, X amount of tackles or X amount of pressures during the year. You kind of sit there and you say, Hey, like that group, especially during mini camp time could have used somebody in that room who was like, Hey, all right, guys, like we all got to be here. We all got to be on our P's and Q's. So, you know, David Mayo to me is like a, a veteran, you know, lets everybody know, helps Jamin, you know, max out his potential, helps Cole max out his potential. So whether he makes the roster TBD, but certainly that's the goal when you give that guy a contract extension in January. Right. Uh, real fast. I, I got to dip. I got to go take care of this peasant. Um, Sam, I love you, Todd. I love you. Congratulations, Kyle. You're, you're all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Reed. We'll see you again. Right, see you. Uh, Sam, to wrap this up, Reed. I have a couple questions. And I want to bring this back onto the field. First one being Charles Manning, we set the Washington football team celebrated the 30 year anniversary of the 91 Super Bowl team. It's argued as the best team to ever be assembled. And I don't think there's many that are going to argue against it. But Charles Mann was interviewed and actually had some comments about Chase Young saying that he looked overwhelmed last season, kind of let the fame get to his head a little bit. What are your thoughts on that with Charles Mann? Do you think that Chase Young will take him up on his offer of teaching him up a little bit? I don't know if, if Chase will take him up on his offer, but I, I do think, you know, it's a, it's a fair thing to say he might have been overwhelmed. And, you know, last year, one of my big stories before the season was about how Chase was trying to find the balance between Hollywood and, you know, his, his game, right? I mean, this guy, you know, moved to L.A., did a bunch of photo shoots, was out there a ton because I mean, he's at clutch sports, you know, he, LeBron is kind of his guy, especially if you're a, a modern athlete that wants to see yourself, you know, one day be in the entertainment mogul uh, figure as LeBron is with, with space jam two and things like that. So mm. I think that was Chase's role model, but I think <clears throat> that you can't, you can't do that unless the production on the court, on the field remains unimpeachable and so I think when Chase maybe started to have some trouble you know getting started early on um I think you could definitely see him I think Ron has said this you know he was pressing he was he was trying too hard to maybe to get sacks and, and not trusting his teammates mm. so I think that uh I think that he was a little bit overwhelmed last year I, I think that uh it's a really big question because to me he has all the talent in the world right like yeah. he, even coming back from an ACL is is not the um, is not the mountain to climb that it used to be. You see dudes come back all the time, but can he put it together? Can that line put it together? Because as for as much talent as they've had, we've seen what, like one six game stretch at the end of 2020 where they really balled. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't know if I don't have insight on, on whether Chase will take Charles Mann up on his offer, but certainly the root cause of that offer uh, is, is something that I think every Washington fan should be watching real close. Yeah, and then to the last one I have for you, I promise. What is, because we had Michael Phillips on Monday, he kind of explained the whole stadium situation and where the possible outlets could be. But if you could kind of elaborate for us, what is the holdup with D.C.? Why is that like the no-go for this new team? What what could possibly be the holdup? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And I don't think any, I don't know if we've gotten um, a real firm answer yet. And obviously, like, Mayor Muriel Bowser is, is a big proponent of this team and, and wants to bring it back to DC. I mean, one of the first things I did when I, when I got this job in, in early 2020 was like going down to uh, you know, one of the spots in DC where they were having world sport day and, and Bowser came out and, and um, you know, was very adamant with Doug Williams and <laughs> Dwayne Haskins was actually there at the time. Like, oh, really? you know, we want Ooh. these guys coming back to DC. Um, so I, I think it's a priority for her. Um but I, logistically, you know, I don't, I don't know if, uh, if maybe, you know, they, they talk about that commercial complex that will come in addition that's in the plans for the Nova stuff. I don't, I don't know if that's something that DC can accommodate either real estate wise or whether, you know, like the lease for the RFK land, um, it, it says it has to be used for sport field, you know, sporting fields, uh, or, you know, recreational, which is why you have like soccer fields there now. Right. So I don't, I don't know if that's the holdup. I don't think 
we've dug into that um, enough, but I imagine when this rebrand is over, I mean, that is, you know, when you talk about what can Washington do to, to get fans back outside of winning on the field, because everybody knows that's number one. But you talk about, you know, nailing the rebrand and and giving them a, a stadium experience they can be proud of. I mean, I wrote a story at the end of the year about why this this team is is ranked 31st in attendance, why the Washington football team was was the most valuable sports franchise in the world in 2000. And now it's last year, Forbes named it the eighth most valuable franchise in the NFL. How, how is that possible? Mm. Um, and, and I think a lot of that is the stadium experience. So moving. Uh, I, I think would be a real boon and, and bring it back to DC, obviously for everybody that remembers RFK uh, would be a big deal. Where Absolutely. do you think the like leader is right now to put that stadium? Do you think DC is the leader or do you, I mean, ideally I think that's where it should go right on that RFK site, but you know, there's other options at play here. So where do we think the leader is at this moment? Yeah, I, I think you got to put the leader a, as Virginia right now um, because, you know, they're introducing legislation to expand the authority. Um, you know, you're having conversations with Northern Virginia politicians about, hey, you know, what would this complex look like if we were to have it? Um, that that does not eliminate Maryland and D.C. because, you know, Lord knows the NFL loves leveraging uh, areas against each other uh, to get, to give themselves the best deal, whether it be public money for a stadium or you know, lower taxes. I mean, that's why the bills were threatening to move to San Antonio before the year, you know, like mm. if you don't live in like a, a geographic area with three jurisdictions to leverage against one another, you got to kind of invent them. Um, hmm. So Washington, I mean, Washington actually has, I think what NFL owners want in terms of like people to go to and say, well, you know, Nova's going to give me this Maryland. What are you going to give me PG County? But uh, I, I think we're real early in that process. And I think that while Nova is the furthest along right now, uh, I don't think that means that that's the site by any means. My man, Sam, I absolutely love it when you come on here, dude, being able to bring <laughs> us some intellect and actual and an educated opinion on this show for once every while. Thank you so much for joining us, Sam. I hope you have a great night. Enjoy your weekend. I'm so jealous of you going to the Senior Bowl. I hope you bring your binoculars, you take notes. I can't <laughs> wait to talk to you again and be able to get your mind and be able to grasp how you felt those quarterbacks look, brother. Uh, Kyle, thanks so much for your time, man. I always enjoy thanks, it. Man. Of course, Sam. You have a great weekend, brother. Be safe. You too. All right, everybody. Now, to wrap up this episode, I want to talk to you, Todd, about some of the fan questions that were submitted. And we can go Get rapid me. fire here, Todd, because there are right. some fantastic ones in here. This one's from Tim Towner, T Towner0629 on Twitter. He says, assuming we do not trade massively to get a quarterback or to move up or down, who would you trade and for what range of picks? He says, because we need about seven to eight rookies and we only have six picks. Oh, that is a tough question. Um, Honestly, I think, oh, hold, hold on one second. I got, got a little delivery coming here. You're fine. Uh, but Tim, I will say, I oh. think that Jerron Payne is, oh, there's, look at her. <gasps> she's beautiful <laughs> she got a face for the camera dude she's I so know, small she's, she's got her little washington football gear on that's for, awesome for this. dude so figured we'd wrap up with her in here if that's my cool. man yes of course um but tim sorry i'm sorry dude but i think deron Payne is a huge uh trade asset at this point that fifth year option with how good he's played i think that is somebody who you could move easily uh, with this team now besides that I don't really see anybody else that, that would be willing or mortgage because I, I think Cam Curl is the other one that moves the needle for teams and I'm not willing to give up Cam I think Cam needs to stay here that safety room has been so hard to fill out and to figure out for this team ever since Sean passed and I don't yeah. think getting rid of Cam Curl right now is the best move to be able to do that now, that being said, I think De'Ron Payne is that one asset. Because of that fifth-year option, it's cheap. The team trading for him would be able to have that year of just easy money before they give him the extension. I think that would make a lot more sense. Uh, Payne has been that name for almost the entire season at this point where people were kind of like, well, if we're going to make a move, that's who you're going to give up. So I think that's kind of kind of where it is. You can get back a nice return. Yes, and now our next question is from Scott Hartley in the U.K. Oi! And Scott's oh, yeah. question is, now that you're done annoying the fan base, Kyle, what do you think will happen first, a playoff win or a stadium venue announcement? Oh, my goodness. Uh, ooh. That's a great Let's question. Let's go playoff win. Playoff win. Come on. We're, we're getting a playoff win. 
we're going to get a quarterback. We're going to go to the playoffs this season, and we're going to get a win. Yeah, I I agree with you that the playoff win most likely will happen first. I think next year is that time for it to happen. But I will say it would blow everyone's minds if after the rebrand they also announced that, that they have a stadium in, inked up with the contract. I know it's very, very early. Right. But Sam be, just told us it's too early. For but that. I'm just saying that it would be, be amazing. Crazy. Yeah. It would, be, would be it would be it would blow. You want to make a splash? That's how you make a splash. Please just don't put it in Virginia. <laughs> you're all right the next question from scott is rank them in importance to you todd the okay. name the logo the uniforms and preserving a nod to the past or how the team performs all right team performance always number one right so that's got to be the first one uh nod to the past i guess that was that like one thing there was a little slash in there so yep. we'll consider those yeah. after that i'm gonna go uniform because names suck. We've gotten used to the Wizards. Uh, so performance and history, uniforms, logo, name. Let's go. Let's go like that. Yeah, and I, I'm right there with you uh, with that kind of mindset because it's performance number one. That is what, what really needs to happen in order to get the glory back here to D.C., get the pride, the respect, the class back to this Washington fan base. Absolutely. And, and the second is obviously the uniforms. I really, that's the biggest thing that I'm looking you for. You and I have talked movie. about this so many times no. over the last year. Like at, where, this, at this point, all of this arguing over which name, blah, blah, blah. Like I really who cares? do not who cares? care. I really do not care. You know what I mean? And so like, that's where I'm like, the uniforms is the most important besides winning, obviously. And so I agree about preserve, uh, preserve for the past and everything like that for three and four i think that was fantastic now paul murphy's question what wide receivers would you like to see us target either in free agency or in the draft Ooh, uh yeah, well I, I hadn't even really thought I about know, i know you've been very receivers busy, too though. hard that's no it's all good i hadn't thought about wide receivers too hard because i do think that once everyone's healed up i think that we're gonna have a decent wide receiver room um I, I think it, it's always more dependent on the quarterback that we've brought in here. You know, I think anyone that gets Terry next to them is going to say, oh, yeah, there's a great receiver room. Right. You know, if we can get Curtis Samuel actually on the field for more than four snaps for a season, I think you're doing okay. <laughs> so, you know. I love that, dude. Uh, for free for free agency, Paul, I re everyone knows I love Mike Williams from the – LA Chargers and the one thing about the Chargers that they're infamous for is not re-signing their guys they don't like paying money to their guys they just continue to draft and draft so it's a foregone conclusion in my opinion that Mike Williams is walking and that's the guy that I really like the wild card is Chris Godwin uh, from Tampa yes. Bay because you don't know what they're going to do I mean if Tom retires this year are they going to retain Chris Godwin? Or are they going to stick with Mike Evans? What's going to go on there? So I think Chris Godwin's a good one, but the injury is a big concern as well. And then in the draft, it's Traylon Burks, the wide receiver. He's 6'3", 225 pounds from the University of Arkansas, uh, alma mater of Cam Curl. I love this kid. I, my comp for him is Anquan Bolden. I heard Trevor Sikama from the Draft Network say that his, his comp is DK Metcalf, and I, I totally agree with it. I love Traylon Burks. He does the short, medium, and long game. He has everything. And when you go back and watch his film against Alabama, it was absolutely disgusting what he did to that secondary all by himself. Now, to wrap this up, Todd, last question with the, from Sharp Eye Washington, Archangel43. With the okay. team officially changing its name, on a scale of one, 0 to 10, what confidence do you have that they will get a stadium in the district? In the district specifically? A 4. You I put don't a think, 4. I put a 4. I, I would love to see it specifically on the RFK site. I just don't think it happens. I think there's too much going on. I don't think there's enough space. If it's not on the RFK site specifically, <clears throat> excuse me, where does it go? DC is too small, too packed. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd love to see it. I'm just not confident in it. I'm less than that, dude. I'm at a two or a three. Or if maybe I'm just hopeful. I don't know. May, I'm hoping that what's happening is the Washington football team is using Virginia as leverage at this point against Maryland, against DC, saying, hey, look, man, you guys had the ball in your court before. You had the leverage because nobody was really coming after us and we were right. we didn't have a home. We were looking for a place. But now Virginia is trying hard and they, they're giving us the ability to be able to have the gambling aspect to it that they want to be able to bring business near uh, the Dulles Airport and everything. 
I could see I didn't even think about the gambling. You know what? Maybe let's put it in Nova. Yeah. (laughs) I I didn't think about the gambling. Maybe maybe we should build that thing in Nova. It's a big thing, dude. It really is. And I, but I am worried about it being in Northern Virginia, but I could totally understand why they'd want to go out there. It's better, better for everybody. A lot of their people that actually show up are coming from there. It would make a lot of sense for them to do that. But thank you so much to everyone for your comments, for your questions, for contributing to this episode. Thank you to Jordan Assery. It was good to be able to talk with him. And then Sam Fortier, as always, I love that guy. And Dude, he's so much fun. Todd, I appreciate you for, for taking the time out, being able to come on here of without course. Hall. You know, we couldn't be out here without Hall, dude. He's so, such an important part of the episode. We need to Absolutely. be able to have somebody in here to bring that intellect in here. And you really did that, sir. I know I do you, not bring intellect, but yes, I appreciate did. that. But I, I appreciate you for doing it because I know I understand my son is going to be a, a year old next month. So dude, I understand. I can't believe that. I know. It's insane. I can't Already. believe how you're here. I don't know how you don't have bags under your eyes. I hope your uh, wife is doing well. Thank you. Thank you. We just bought a new coffee maker. That's how. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes a lot of sense, Todd. I, I love you, brother. I appreciate you for coming love on. Love you here, too, guys. Man. We'll see you guys on Monday. Make sure you don't miss it. We're going to recap the divisional, uh, the conference weekend. The championships are going down this weekend. We'll be able to go over that and then preparing for this rebrand that's going to be coming out on Wednesday morning. Good morning, Woo! America. Woo! I love me some Craig Melvin. All right, everybody, we'll see you on Monday. Be safe. Washington football. Woo! Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kyle. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. And if you liked what you saw, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you get notified when anything new is uploaded to the channel. Also, we just launched theburgundyzone.com. You can go there and find all of our latest news, articles, and the latest episodes that are uploaded. Again, we also have the Discord chat server, where all of our VIP folks are in, like Andy Burroughs, Scott Hartley, Sergio Martin is in there as well. Don't miss out on the Discord chat server. Go and check that out. Until next time, everybody, watching the football. Hey!